What a wild off season we had and now it's time for the regular season. What's on guys? Jay Hoy back with you. Today, welcome back to episode number 9 of our franchise mode with the Buffalo Sabres. We are back here in episode 9 at the start of the regular season where we had a little bit of a crazy offseason where we almost lost Zach Benson uh, with a qualifying offer. Now, of course, if you didn't watch last episode, make sure you go do so. Uh, but if you didn't see what happened, pretty much our team remained the same. But... Zach Benson did uh, get a qualifying offer uh, from, I don't remember the team, but from another team uh, for three years at $10 million. Now, this was a guy that was coming off from, I think it was an entry-level contract, and he the best season he's had was last year at 66 points. Obviously, we're going to re-sign him, uh, but another team beat us to it, got the qualifying up there, and of course, we had to match. So other than that, everything else, I believe, is exactly the same. Um, our defense, I think, is exactly the same as last year. Only thing is, we don't have, I think it was Braden McNabb or somebody else, uh, that was our third line left defenseman. Uh, now we have Ryan Johnson, who is a former first round pick for us. Last year, he did play a decent amount. Didn't really have the greatest of seasons, but either way, he is up here with us. Uh, goaltenders remain the same as well, Levi and uh, Lukanen. So I know uh, we did make the trade uh, Lukanen for Freddie Anderson along with, I think it was like a draft pick or a prospect or something. Uh, but of course, uh, in last episode, I also said that we somehow didn't save the game correctly or something. So I redid the other trade with the defenseman, but at that point, I mean, we... Cap Lucan and it doesn't really matter because we were gonna get a new goaltender anyway. He's already in a contract. Who really cares? So big thing for this season, right? This is make or break for Jeff Skinner, basically, right? He's 88 overall, 34 years old up there. He is listed as the first line uh winger and arguably had his best year, I would guess, ever last year. Yeah, so best year ever, I'll say by 10 points, which is actually kind of insane so last year he did incredible but the thing is when you look at our team right we have Zach Benson who arguably should be on the first line you have Peyton Krebs who kind of is just only the third line because there's nowhere really else to put him and then if we take a look at our AHL team we have Yuri Kulik I'm gonna go with who is an 84 overall sniper young player who is on the last year of his entry-level contract along with Isaac Rosen here, as well as, is it Matthew? Yeah, Matthew Savoy. So we have three really good young players here that all are looking for spots on the NHL roster. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, or, you know, whatever word you want to use for this situation, it's a good thing, but at the same time, it's not because we need space for all these players and I really don't want to play any of those good young, you know, offensive, you know, players on the fourth line. I really hate doing that, right? I want them to play. I want them to be in roles that they can succeed. So the only kind of thing that is available right now is that Jeff Skinner spot, right? That opens up him if we do do something with him. Then the other player that really is like in that spot is Casey Middlestat. And realistically, he's a great third line center for us. And he can put up the stats depending on what team he plays in. I mean, 60 points is a third line. I mean, at the time, I think he was a second line center. But 41 points, his role kind of diminished a little bit last year. And it might be time that we trade him away. Or maybe we trade away one of those other young players for defensive help. Because... Looking at our defense, we have Darlene, we have power, we know that. We now have Favor, that's a three stack. But other than those three, we can always upgrade Dumbo, right? I'm not super attached to him. We can always upgrade Johnson, we can always upgrade DeMello as well. So we have some space. If we could get someone that's, you know, pretty good as a defenseman, I would, I would definitely consider that. And as far as goaltenders, I mean, we have Levi, who is now an 86 overall. So as long as he shows up and plays how an 86 overall is supposed to, I think we'll be pretty good. But 
you know, with that young talent, you know, pushing and, and being very ready, you know, we have some uh, some players that are kind of on that point of like, all right, either perform or it might just be best case scenario that in order to protect our future, we have to trade those older guys away. So that's something we're going to have to be watching here as we continue on with the first half of the season. But let's get a little bit done. Let's see where we go. Let's get about, I think it's like 20 games done and kind of see where we go from there and see what changes we need to make. All right, we got 10 games into the season here after this simulation. So it's not the greatest start, right? Two losses right off the bat, both by good margins, if you will. And oh boy, not off to a good start. We're getting a couple points with the overtime losses. But oh boy, three, five, and two. That's not the way you want to start. I mean, do we want to go look at kind of see what's going on already? I mean, do I want to? I mean, we kind of have to, right? That's not the start we want. Because at this point, we have a team. You know, we could definitely use some upgrades on defense, but at the same time, we got to keep going. So two points minus nine for Dylan Cousins on the second line. I mean, just for now, I'm going to move Middlestat and Quinn up just to shake up the lines a little bit. First line, I mean, first line's doing fine. I'm not really upset. I mean, again, we're, we're early in the year. How's our defense doing? Okay, no points, but plus nine playing 22 minutes a night. I'll take that. Our second line, not doing well. Let's switch that up. And then DeMello, Johnson, I'm not really expecting much from you guys. How is Levi and Lukanen doing? So Levi's played eight out of the 10 games and not doing great, but not doing bad either. So, okay. So let's switch up a little bit, kind of see how that helps us. Let's go another 10 games, kind of see where we go from there. You know, then we'll kind of take a look at power play, penalty kill, and then we'll kind of get into the more, uh, you know, complex stats, if you will. All right, continue on. We get a couple of wins after the lineup change a little bit. We will take that, but still not going kind of how we want. But we are winning some more games than we're losing. So 9-9-2, nine, nine 20 games in the season, not terrible. But if we're looking at how our division's kind of laid out, then, uh, you know, we got a pretty good range there as well. So something we got to look forward to. But let's go see if those changes kind of made any much of a difference. Uh, Thompson now leading the team in points. But all right, let's take a look at it. So Skinner, 18 points. I mean, solid uh, 14 points for Benson. Krebs doing fine. Nine points for Cousins. But middle stat is still doing better, so we'll keep that change there. Uh, Tux at 17, he's at 11, and he's not doing too crazy there. So, so let's swap up the lines one more time here and sign and see if that does. Paterka and Quinn, we swap those guys around. Defensively, how's this doing? Minus 10 for Faber, plus 13 for Dumbo. So he seems to be figuring it out. As much as I don't want to put Brock Faber on the third line, I almost feel like we might need to do that. Because Demel's playing well, Dumba's playing well, uh, Darlene's playing fine, Power is not doing too hot, and Johnson's actually playing okay. So let's switch it up, right? We'll see what's going on there. Uh, we're going to take a look at the goaltenders too. So Levi turned it around a little bit, right? 8 7 and 2 with one shutout, not terrible, but still. Right, uh, 49 goals allowed so far. Looking at, I mean, four games played, not a huge sample size, but one and two, not great stats overall, uh, but something to look out for. Uh, but let's continue on a little bit and we'll check in on power play and penalty kill. So we take a look at the goals for and goals against. We're running about even, right? 62 goals for, 60 goals against. So what's the kind of top? So top 68. I mean, we're towards the bottom, off by a couple, and defensively, we're actually doing very well. So maybe a little bit under what we're supposed to be doing in the goals for department. So as soon as some of these guys start get going, then we'll be in a better uh, you know position. So other than that, power play percentage twelve point one percent, not what you want to see if you're our power play. We have five shorthanded goals against. So our power play definitely is not doing it. 
for our penalty kill. So our special teams need some work. And, I mean, we're still super early into the season. So I'm not really going to take the, you know, the last 10 too seriously. But I guess let's go try to see what's going on with our power play, what's going on with our penalty kill, and kind of see what we can do to help our odds here. So after changing around a good portion of almost every single line other than our top one, we have new line combinations everywhere. Now I can break them down, go through them, but you probably don't care. So our forward lines are all different. Our defensive core is a little bit different. We move Faber down to the third line just to kind of open him up a little bit, as well as took we took Owen Power off the power play. We put Faber on and everywhere. So basically... All the lines that Fab um, that Owen Power was on, as far as special teams goes, basically we swapped him with Faber, and now here we go. So we weren't scoring enough, but we actually had pretty good defense. So how that makes sense, I don't know. But either way, let's get to the half point of the year. We'll kind of give a full breakdown of what's going on and kind of outlook for the rest of the season. All right, let's continue on. Let's see how all of these changes work like i said on the power play we swap them things around swap some people's roles and overall changed a good portion of things and that's what we're here to do and there seems to be i mean i know we were you know towards the top or i guess towards the bottom whatever you want to look at it as you know doing really well you know with the goals against department but at the same time i went too many games it's fine let's just go to there's a couple days in the middle and okay so i feel like we're always like just around 500 like every single time so let's break it down right let's go through every stat standings team stats everything to see how we can fix this team going forward starting with our forwards and man jeff skinner you're gonna make it really tough on me I and mean, it might be that year where we have to trade him away maybe get a you know some high draft picks or something depending on how our, the rest of our season looks not sure just yet uh thompson still there benson point per game will take that tuck and middle stab both are there i mean second i mean second and first line I mean, Dylan Cousins, I'm not sure what it is, but you're not doing it right now, right? That's why you're on the third line for us. And what also I'm noticing, too, is both Quinn and Paterka. Now, if that was our third line, then that's not bad. But at the same time, we need one of those guys to just, boop, just go up just a little bit, right? Just a little bit to uh to get those guys going right we need one of those guys to start heating up a little bit right just mid 30s mid 30s in points by the halfway point of the season we want that because we need him up there with like the middle side like 34 would be nice now i know not everybody can get you know the ideal points but at the same time we'd like for someone to just push that bar up just a little bit um our fourth line doing fourth line things i'm not upset by anything they're doing i mean 10 points, 10 points, basically 10 points. That's exactly what we need, right? 10 to 15, even to 20 points throughout the season. You know, play solidly on our special teams. And I mean, and you're going to figure it out. So, but as far as that goes, I mean, we need a little bit more from one of our wingers. Again, is that coming through line changes, personnel changes? We need to call somebody up. I don't know. We'll have to figure that one out. Uh, as far as that defensive core goes, Dallin's doing it. Everyone else, I don't want to say isn't, but is not necessarily playing great. So, good start for Johnson. I'll give him that, right? 10 points plus 11 on the year so far. Power, I ah, just, I mean, I don't really care about the goals there, but I would like a little bit more assists. Like, I want him up there, like, similar to Darlene numbers, right? That's what I'm kind of thinking. But minus eight, though. Uh, him and Faber were in a line together for a good while. I'm just not doing it right now. And of course, if we don't really get the results we want by the trade deadline, then we can start seeing maybe DeMello out. Do we then see Dumba out? I don't know. Uh, maybe DeMello out sooner rather than later. Maybe next episode we go for a defenseman. I'm not sure, right? That's something we got to keep in mind, right? We were doing well defensively and uh, just not getting enough goals, but, you know, we uh, we are struggling recently. So, I mean, we're seeing the same story with Lukanen as we've seen the last little bit. He just has not done well in this one with us. 
So it might be time to move on from him. I think we, yeah. So he's expiring this year. I don't think we assigned him to an extension just yet because we wanted more consistency out of him. So as we go forward here, Levi is our number one guy. I mean, he's got to figure it out. Medium elite potential. You know, his stats aren't great, but we're also not playing great in front of him. So, you know, we can't just blame the goaltenders, but we get a little bit more consistency out of our backup goaltender, out of our defensive core uh, through those couple of guys that are struggling. And we need to get some more goals out of our forward group. I feel like we'll be in a good spot. So as far as that goes, I mean, we, we kind of see what that's all about. As far as our team stats go, we sit in 22nd in the entire league. And once again, we're in a similar story with our goals and goals against. About even, right? That sums up our entire year. Whereas we're, we're 500. That's about it. So goals for 145. I mean, we're probably, tor uh, we're kind of middle of the pack there. Um, but obviously the teams that aren't scoring enough are at the later part of the league. So that's kind of expected there. So middle of the pack goal scoring wise, obviously we'd like that a little bit more. Goals against, are we still sitting up there? We're not. So 118 is the is the mark where are we sitting so we've actually allowed a lot more goals it feels like since then so we sit i guess middle to whatever that of the pack power play percentage 16.3 we're still towards the bottom obviously our changes have not proven much and our penalty kill has improved a little bit not great but a little bit so power play goal scoring maybe personnel up uh, you know upgrades on defense and figure out how to win away because we're doing it at home but we need to figure out how to do it away as well so a couple things we gotta look out for you know obviously we have uh, a few players that were on the brink of you know being out of the team and I guess we something we didn't really look at is playoffs so I know we're halfway through the year but it's definitely something we got to look forward to. Uh, so Eastern Conference. So where do we currently sit? So we are in 11th with 40 points. So we are tied with 10th. And then we are four points off the first wildcard spot, six points off the second spot. So that means we're still in the running, right? Of course, then we are in the, not the Pacific Division. We are in the Atlantic, Atlantic Division. I knew that. Uh, so we sit, I mean... If we're thinking of wild card, as far as this, I mean, it's probably easy to see it through Eastern Conference. So we need to be at 44 points. So obviously we're not far off. 50 points is that mark for the rest of our division, basically. So we got to get going, right? At this point of the year, we got to get going. We got to figure out a win here because we're in that spot right now where we need to figure it out. Because if not, you know, we're what, four years into this already? And have we even sniffed the playoffs? I don't, I don't even think so. So whatever it may be, that's going to be an in-between episode thing. See what's out there. See what we could do. See what kind of deals are out there. And, uh, you know, just fix all of our issues. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you did enjoy, make sure you hit the like button down below. You guys have been showing some incredible support on the channel. So thank you guys so much for that. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. Hit that button down below so you don't miss any videos. And as always, guys, we'll see you in the next one.